Thank you for uh, for your invitation. So today I will I will talk about an algebraic approach to the equivalence problem of, of MSO definable transactions on uh, on graphs of bounded tree widths. Uh, so this is uh, ongoing work with Mikolai Boyanchik, and uh, the main result that uh, I will prove today is that. The following uh, weaker version of equivalence is is decidable. So, uh, when we have two two MSO transactions, are they equivalent in the sense? Are the outputs equivalent with respect to some equivalence relation, which is not isomorphism but uh, something weaker that we will define later? If it would be isomorphism, then it, it would be equivalence problem. Uh, so, so let's recall that uh, that MSO transactions are uh, non-deterministic, but in this talk uh, functional uh, graph transformations described by MSO formulas. And an example transformation would be like this: consider such formula, which we will, which says that uh, there's a walk of length two from x to y going through z. A variable so it transforms uh, such a graph well as, as you can see to a graph like this uh, it connects nodes uh, whenever they are connected by a walk of length 2 so uh, this transformation does not use the full expressivity of, uh, of MSO transductions it's it, it's a simple one and also, let's say a little bit uh, about graphs of true width k. I'm not going to define um, exactly what what is the definition, but let's just say that graphs of true width one are, are exactly trees, and um, in general, graphs of true width k are exactly those that admit a certain representation by a tree called the tree decomposition. In this case, it looks like this. Um, it's a way of uh, of packing vertices into into packages um, and and forming forming a tree out of those packages, somehow consistent with the graph. Uh, well, what is uh, relevant for the talk is that um, if equivalence is decidable for for C to D MSO transactions uh, when C and D are classes of graphs, then uh, they. They, they must have uh, bounded tree width. They must be some sub subclasses of of bounded tree width class. So uh, so so that makes uh, our our problem well the most general that can potentially have decidable equivalence. Well, and and to equivalence relation that that was set to be defined later um, for graphs uh, G and H. Let's say they are, they are related if there's a square matrix with uh, real values that are possibly negative, uh, such that, uh, well, such an equation uh, holds. Those are agency matrices. Mm, and uh, rows and columns sum up to one. So that would be isomorphism relation if, uh, if we meant uh, non-negative integer value dexes. And um, if the constraint uh, would be non-negative real values, that would be fractional isomorphism. So uh, what we have here is, uh, is an even more relaxed version, which allows also negative coefficients. But uh, what we will be using um, in the rest of the talk is, uh, is the characterization by counting walks of length n uh, for each n. On graphs, if the if the number of uh, walks are the same, then the graphs are mm, equivalent in this sense. So so this is how it looks. And the proof uh, is built on two theorems. Well, one is uh, that equivalence is decidable for three to three to Q registered transducers, although. Q can be replaced with some with some other rings. Mm, th this result was already mentioned today, and also that uh, MSO transactions that we we're dealing with uh, admit a characterization by by register transducers, but over uh, 
source graph algebra. We will def define it later. So, so the general idea will be to, to somehow uh, uh, simulate register transducers over uh, source graphs with, with polynomial automata, so with those uh, 3 to Q register transducers. So what is a register transducer? Um, Very general, let, let A be a, any, any algebra. So a field of rational numbers, or maybe a monoid of words, or, or an algebra of source graphs that we will be using. Mm. So a string to, to, to A, register transducer, is essentially a, a deterministic finite automaton. Um, additionally, equipped with some registers that, that store A. So, so in an example, let's say that we have two registers and they are initiated to zero, and after each letter they just uh, add one, if and only if it was an A, or add one to register B. If B was read, um, the output function is multiplication of the register, so it's easy to see that such a transducer computes uh, well, the number of A's in the word, multiplied by number of Bs. Okay, and uh, let's remark that even though it's presented for string to A, uh, the equivalence result uh, holds also <coughs> for, uh, for the case where trees are in the input. And, and as already mentioned, equivalence is decidable in case A is a computable field. So, for example, rational numbers or a field of rational functions. But actually, we will use another ring. Let's also say a little bit what, what is a sourced graph. So, it's just a graph, but some, some vertices are, are given names. And... Uh, there can be at most one vertex uh, with each name, so in this case there's, there's a 1, there's a 3, and there is no 2. So we define two operations. One, one is called join. We, uh, the name kind of speaks for itself. So there's a join operation, which uh, essentially glues two graphs along the, along the vertices that have the same names. And, uh, and the forget operation, which uh, which, which, which takes away the name from a vertex and it becomes unnamed. So this is the relation and, uh, and as we said, the idea is to somehow uh, well, simulate transducers that deal with graphs, with transducers that uh, deal with some ring. So this will be a ring of uh, formal power series in this case. Mm. Well, actually graphs modulo this relation. So the idea is to, to, to map a graph to, a, to such a formal power series uh, where the coefficients are exactly the number, numbers of walks and uh, with such a definition uh, it's straightforward that therefore graphs are related if and only if they have the same series associated. Okay. We have to extend it to source graphs somehow. Mm. So the, the, the idea is as follows. Extend it. Mm, we'll, we'll use somehow the names. So let G, I, J, where I and J are sources, mm, be a formal power series, like very similar to, to this one, but it counts walks from I to J that have positive length. We, 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 we don't. Mm, we don't count like some trivial walks. And what is important is that interiors do not touch sources. So a walk that starts at one, then visits some unnamed vertices and ends in three is okay, but if you ever visit a three, like, you have to end the walk. Okay, so in this, uh, in this particular example, G11 would be well, what, what can be the walks in here? There's, for each length, there's a unique walk. 
and it has to be of even length. So there's one walk of length two, one walk of length four, etc. So G13, where there, there's no such thing. Um, oh, something I, I, I didn't say about. By G1 bullet, uh, we mean a walk that starts in one and uh, ends in any other vertex that is not a source. Yes, yes, yes. No. Oh. Yes, yes, that's true. So there's a mistake on the slide. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. It should be x plus x squared uh, plus x to the third power. Well, all the all the length should appear. Okay, and let's let let's not count the the, the, the fourth one. So what uh, what do we precisely mean by by simulating this algebra? Modulo this relation with a ring of formal power series. It exactly means uh, that we want to reconstruct uh, the series for join of the graphs out of the series that we had for the graphs separately. So, uh, well, what can be the formula in general for this? Well, the graphs, uh, the, the walks from i to j in the join of the graphs, well, can either go entirely through g or entirely through h because they cannot touch sources in, in the middle. So, so, so it's just the sum. The, 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 the formula is pretty simple. Okay, it's not actually true in all the cases, but, but it's morally speaking true. And for forget, um, well, what can be the walk from i to j? It was either a walk from i to j that didn't touch k anyway, or it touches the k because it's allowed to do it now, so it goes from i to k, then loops, well, makes some number of loops, possibly no loops, that's why there's one, and then goes to j. So the formulas are true, well, well they are clearly true for the sets of walks, not for the series, but just for the sets of walks, but then a series is just, just a set of walks uh, where you replace each edge with x, and you replace concatenation with multiplication, essentially, you just rewrite it. And this respects addition and multiplication, that's why the formulas still hold without any, any problems there. So what are we left with right now? Now we have to show that equivalence is decidable for register transducers that uh, will initially have polynomials in registers and can multiply and add them, but also can use this Pliny plus and produce a formal power series out of this. So if we analyze a little bit, we, we see that F plus uh, is a rational function which has uh, two big consequences for us. Well, the first one is that it, is that it makes computation possible. Because uh, well, from the beginning, when we are dealing with uh, formal power series, well, it's not a countable object. Um, so in principle, it's not clear how to make computations there. But in this case, all we will get will be some rational expressions. So, so this is uh, why we, why it's a computable ring that we're dealing with. So, uh, it, it's not a polynomial function. This is something I think I forgot to mention. That, uh, oh, no, no, the wrong one. That, uh, in those formulas for reconstruction, it is a crucial property of those formulas that uh, they use only addition, multiplication, that, that they are terms over the algebra that we're, uh, that we're using. Like it's not an, any function. Uh, let's go back. So since we are trying to reduce to polynomial automata, 
that can update the registers using polynomial functions in, in the usual sense, polynomial, just uh, plus and times. And this would be ideal if a function that maps f to f plus would be polynomial. So it's a rational function, a fraction of polynomials, so not that bad. Um, and this is just uh, another problem that has to be uh, dealt with, but uh, I would not like to uh, expand on this topic. But we were able to prove that even with division, it doesn't uh, matter that much what ring is there, equivalence is decidable as well. So, well, this, this finishes the proof of the main results. It's, uh, it's a way of simulating uh, register transducers over source graph algebra, or well, modular uh, relation that we mentioned, with, with formal power series. Well, it uses Klini star, but uh, if you um, express it as a rational function and prove an additional lemma, equivalence is decidable for it as well. The future work that we plan is to use some, maybe use some already known graph polynomials, because there's, there's lots of them, to obtain some uh, equivalence relations on graphs that are closer to isomorphism. Or maybe are equal to isomorphism on some restricted classes of graphs. Um, the first two examples that uh, we checked were characteristic polynomial which is a characteristic polynomial of a JNCC matrix of a graph, and also a TAT polynomial, which is a generating function that counts the number of occurrences of some patterns, and is also used for counting, like lots of things, counting colorings of a graph, counting matchings, etc. Well, the result is that they fail badly uh, to characterize even, even trees. So the simplest class of graphs that we could consider. This is the result from the 70s that uh, almost all trees, in the sense of the proportion of the trees that have the property, almost all trees are, have the same characteristic polynomial. Given the number of vertices, Almost all of them have the same characteristic polynomial and, well, they all have the same TAT polynomial as well. So such a mapping, well, would not help us at all. Well, another example would be to construct some, another, um, well, way of, uh, of finding polynomials would be to construct them as uh, generating functions, maybe counting some, some patterns or maybe inductively on graph structure. Maybe it is worth mentioning that, for example, TAT polynomial admits uh, both kinds of definitions. It can be defined as a generating function that counts some patterns, but also can be defined uh, structurally. It can be reconstructed from, from the polynomial of graph... Uh, can be constructed recursively from a graph that... Um, has got deleted edge, deleted vertex, well, from subgraphs. Let's not say uh, precisely. Okay, this is all what I wanted to say. Thank you.